I write a lot of material that I know I'll throw away. I have to write hundreds of pages before I get to page one. Barbara Kingsolver. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. Today, we're talking about sentences where nothing happens in the sentence. This one wasn't initially part of our lineup, but as I looked over some of the worst sentences in history, and especially in my own writing, I noticed that nothing happening in the sentence was a common trait for sentences that just needed to be improved. Not necessarily that they needed to be taken out or killed entirely, but a lot had to be chopped out, narrow it down to just the good stuff. And a lot of this is because when we're writing, especially in NaNoWriMo, where we are just trying to get a bunch of words down, regardless of how good they are, There are sentences that will help us in the process of writing, especially when we are stream of consciousness, just throwing things down in the order that they happen. But ultimately, these sentences turn out to be largely filler because they let us as the author know that there is time passing here without a lot happening, but they don't actually add anything to the story. When you're going through on your edits, this is when you can look at those sentences and you can look at each sentence and make sure all of them have a purpose. And no, that purpose doesn't have to necessarily be driving the plot forward because that can get exhausting, but they need to show something happening. So how do we identify them? If you have a question about a particular sentence, the easiest way is to figure out what changes at the beginning and the end of the sentence. Because every sentence, every paragraph, every scene should be changing something for your point of view character. Either they are reacting to something that they're seeing, or they are making a choice and other things are going to react to them and they're noticing that. Think of each segment of your story each sentence, paragraph, chapter, as a little micro story. And the reader needs to change from the beginning of that story to the end. If nothing changes, if nothing moved forward, then it is simply not interesting. And I do feel like this is where the kill your darlings advice really applies because you can have the most beautiful, most elegantly written sentence on the planet But if it doesn't move the story forward, it ends up on the cutting room floor. And again, moving the story forward is not the same as moving the plot forward. I do feel like this particular crime of nothing happening is even worse than redundancy. We've railed against redundancy so much this month. Instead of the second side being superfluous because we heard the first side, this one, both sides are useless and not advancing anything in the story. Another way to identify if nothing is happening in the sentence is if you're saying things that the reader can already assume. This is information that the reader doesn't need, therefore it's not changing anything and it's not interesting, nothing is happening. And a lot of the times this will come out when you're trying to do the scene setting. You are talking about the smell of coffee in the coffee shop or the low hum of people talking in a dance hall, whatever it is. These are things that they can be assumed. So while it's not necessarily bad to have that in there, you need to look at why. Why exactly is it important to establish elements about this place that people can assume already exist? More often than not, what you do when you want to scene set is introduce those things that are different, that make that scene unique. If the overwhelming smell in this coffee shop is body odor, that is worth noting. Because it's unexpected. Saying that there is coffee in a coffee shop is not interesting because it's expected. Conversely, if you say the overwhelming smell at a Comic-Con is coffee, that is also interesting. The next thing to keep an eye out for is if you're saying your character didn't do something. There is nothing productive about that sentence most of the time. Every once in a while you can say he made the choice to stand down instead of fight. 
there are times when doing nothing is intentional on the character's part, but he didn't walk up to the guy. We can guess that by you not saying that he walked up to the guy. So that is one of those things that character not doing something is worth a flag. It is worth looking at again, take a closer look and see whether the not doing something has purpose and has something to help develop and advance the character or advance the story in some way. And if it doesn't, figure out something else. Take it out, whatever. But overall, make sure that you are adding to the story, adding something new, whether that is enriching the scene setting, enriching the character or the plot. Pick something that each sentence should be doing. So let's get into some examples here. The first one is mine. His cover story didn't include Spanish, which allowed the established members of the cartel to talk safely in his presence. Mm. So while I feel that this is establishing an important aspect to this story where he does know Spanish, but he didn't let the people know that he knows Spanish. But it's not written well. Oh, it's definitely not. (laughs) (laughs) This can be cleaned up in a lot of different ways, and especially by taking out the didn't include. Didn't is our red flag to take a closer look at the sentence to adjust and clean it up quite a bit. You can make it more of an active thing by saying something like, He pretended, or he never let on. I wouldn't focus on him at all. They spoke freely because they assumed that he didn't understand Spanish. There you go. (laughs) In any case, at a certain point, as she wandered among the galaxies, among the whirling particles and ineffable numbers, something leaked in her mind, smudging the text of the cosmos, and she was lost. This goes into the Kill Your Darlings category. It's very florally written. It's very pretty. I have no clue what's happening in this scene. It's got a vibe. Yeah. No. Your cover should have that vibe. Hand this to your cover designer and let your editor chop at it. I won't say one way or another on this one because I feel like the context matters for this particular sentence say this person is on drugs <laughs> and that is what okay. she's experiencing that's a really good way to write that i feel like the context is important for this one what gets me though is the in any case at a certain point as she wandered out like it is very ephemeral and distant and separated from whatever might be happening around it because it's like at some point this happened but eh nothing actually happened cuz she wandered among the galaxies and the swirling particles and the ineffable numbers I don't hate it but I feel I need more context Morgan's life wasn't easy, going through different, difficult situations. You have that, oh, honey, oh, dear, (laughs) look on your face. So my biggest problem with this is that everybody goes through different, difficult situations. Some people's are worse. So if you are trying to tell me that their life wasn't easy, I need more information about what exactly made their life not easy. Yeah, prove it. This is one of those that an editor might point out as a show don't tell because we're seeing this. You're telling us these things, but it's not being proven to us. If her cheek slams against the stone floor and then his heel grinds onto her other cheek again for the fourth time that day. Okay, now we have an idea that Morgan's life isn't easy. (laughs) But from her point of view, life not being easy and going through different difficult situations could be that she's some rich kid whose parents decided that she needs to go get herself a part-time job to help her through the first year of college, but they're still going to support her most of the way. What exactly is a difficult situation? Because I don't believe you. Nothing happened to the Ferrari. 
I actually kind of like this one. I feel like this is put in there because they expected something to happen to the Ferrari. So if they're borrowing their friend's car and they go to the bad side of town because they need to, but the friend is super rich and just doesn't get it and says, here, take the Ferrari. They go inside, do the drug deal, come back out. (sighs) Nothing happened to the Ferrari. I feel like that's an answer to a question that could have happened earlier in the scene. However, if there was nothing expected to happen to the Ferrari, and you say nothing happened to it, no, that's a terrible sentence. Yes. So this one absolutely depends on the context. What was happening that made us worry about the Ferrari? So I feel like this one, once you start identifying it and seeing it in writing, you'll start to see it all over the place and it'll annoy you as much as it does me. And as someone who has been guilty of this repeatedly throughout my life, now that I see it, I'm like, this can be cleaned up. This can be made more interesting. This can be either set up well, like the nothing happened to the Ferrari line, or just deleted entirely like her life was difficult. This is definitely one, though, that you do in the editing phase, especially during NaNo. Just let yourself write. When you are getting the words down on paper, you can fix it later, you can get rid of those nothing sentences, or you can provide the context that's needed later. But right now, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>